mindfulness is about being in the present moment instead of spending time thinking about the past or worrying about the future. And the reason we're trying to be in the present moment is because that will help us to increase our joy and reduce our suffering. And the most important thing is to be mindful in a non-judgmental way. Now, some of you might have the reaction of, I'm not judgmental. And I want us to recognize that all humans are judgmental. Unfortunately, one of the things that happens though is that we spend a lot of time judging in a way that ends up hurting ourselves. And so two ways to really work on being mindful non-judgmentally is to first just get used to observing your judgments. You might say things like, oh, I should have done that. That's judging yourself, right? You're saying you should have done something. Um, you saying, oh, that mom is always so on top of it. Well, yes, you're judging her. You're judging her in a positive way, but you're still judging her. And what that ends up doing is causing you to judge yourself. Am I on as on top of it as they are? Um, another thing that you can do this week as you're working on noticing your judgmental thoughts is to replace your judgmental thoughts with non-judgmental ones. So let's talk about that mom at school who you've just judged as being so on top of it. Instead, just describe exactly what has happened. That mom remembered to bring in the signed math test. That's it. We're not judging that behavior of hers as better than you or worse than you. We're just observing that she remembered to bring in the signed math test. I have Maris and JD with me here today. I wanna to talk a little bit more about trying to be mindful and in the moment, but non-judgmentally. Part of our process as a family, um, and as a, as personally, I would say as well, was learning to be non-judgmental about people's bodies. And that was a huge process to, to, to notice how easily we slip into judgments and to take yourself out of sort of judging what it means. And just as you said, just observing and describing in your own head what you're seeing without labeling it a good or bad thing. And that's a long-term process. And I would say it was a key process to not only help supporting my daughter through recovery and shifting thinking. And I don't want to make it sound like we're a family that was always talking about other people's bodies and how they looked, but that's our culture. And, you know, that's one of the things that happens. Wow, she looks great in that dress or whatever it is. Um, so that process of really being able to just observe and describe versus judge really honestly was transformative throughout her recovery. And then you know, even as Tom has gone by, has improved my life a lot. That's one of my favorite things about these DBT skills is it's not just helpful when you're going through recovery or trying to help your child. Mm -hmm. These are skills that have enhanced my life. My life is better because I've learned these skills and I've got plenty of work to do. Just Absolutely. <laughs> the difference between having done a skill a couple times versus uh, doesn't mean we, we are perfect at yeah. it. Maris, I'd love to hear what comes up for you as you're reflecting on your recovery and how non-judgmental mindfulness played a role. My eating disorder voice had a lot of judgments and had a lot of them about food in particular. And so there were a lot of times where I would sit down and I would look at what was on my plate and I would just hear the judgments flood in. Like this is too much that, or this is junk food, or this is all these labels that are really, like JD was saying, normalized and common in our society. And so it became a really helpful practice for me to just stick to the facts, kind of like I was a a reporter just sticking mm -hmm. to the facts and just saying like, okay, what's on my plate is pizza or what's on my plate is pasta and leaving it at that without saying that, you know, it's too much this or too much that. That is wonderful.